And what did it feel like, though, to get your first invoice paid from a client? Oh, my and gosh. That was, I still remember, I was like... It's like euphoric. Yeah, I was paid, and I was like, I was on a run, and I came yeah. home and looked at it, and then I was in the shower, just like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Such dude. a big deal. Dude, it's life-changing. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another YouTube video. I'm here with my star student, Keaton Walker. He's uh, successfully achieved $10,000 a month profit with his uh, social media marketing agency, I wanted to have it out at the apartment for an interview. It's gonna be a pretty lengthy video, asking them some questions. We also have some questions prepared from people who left some comments on a post of mine. So uh, why don't you say hi, Keaton? Introduce How's it yourself. Going? Good to be here. Like yeah. Trey said, I'm Keaton Walker. Started this SMMA journey about six months ago. Um, a little bit of stuff before that, but really went full time about six months ago. And it's really cool to be here, hanging out with Trey. Uh, it's been a ton of fun and. He's a mentor that's made a big difference in my life, so it's cool to be here. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I've met clients before in person. You're the first student I've met in person, and it's definitely like I think we we talked a lot off camera. Like, this isn't like our first time talking. We've been hanging out for probably a good couple hours now. Yeah. But like, it's weird because it's solidifying, you know, the business for me. Yeah. You know, it's like okay, this is real. <laughs> you know, like, so for sure. But I, I think. My goal of this video, more than anything, I don't really want to make this video a whole lot about me, my stuff. I really just want to make it about Keaton, his journey, uh, at what stage in his journey he found my stuff, what it did for him, where he sees himself going, and even some of the problems you're facing right now at $10,000 a month. Because, you know, I, I, I'm well aware that most of the people watching are at a stage where like one or two clients feels like the cap. I think you're operating with like eight or nine mm -hmm. right now and operating, you know, Contrasting to how busy some people feel with two, he's operating pretty clean, you know. Um, and of course, there's some problems that we've discussed, but he's doing great. And so, Edelman, tell us kind of about your journey. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what brought you to me, you know, um, and really where we'd like to go. So, start from the top, man. Like, there's a lot to share, I know, but oh wait, no. Before we do any of that, before we do any of that, this is this is your ring. Wow. Um, so let me show this to the camera real quick before, yeah. but this is it. So I give my students these little gold rings, and you've probably seen this in another video, so I'm not going to bring it too close to the camera, but here you go. $10,000 a month, that is yours. Man, um, it's heavy. Yeah, it's, it's gold-plated, man. It's, uh, yeah. it's a legit little ring and fits you great. So yeah, I was kind of worried I'd have to order another one. <laughs> I got the ring size right. No, this is perfect. Sweet, man. Can you take it off easy? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's perfect. Perfect. Awesome. And it looks good too. Show it real quick. Just like kind of. Yeah. That's so dope. Like that pointer finger. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Once a little line on there, I figured it's symbolic, you know, of, of really what we're yeah. doing. So, freaking so cool. Okay, so tell us about your story, though, man. Tell us what got you started and really where you'd like to go with this, you know? Yeah. So, ever since I was little, like, I grew up in a really entrepreneurial family. I knew I wanted to own my own business. I just saw the freedom that I provided my family and the like sense of camaraderie like we were always talking about the business at family dinner which that's not for everybody but it was like something that i really enjoyed and so about a year and a half ago i got home from serving the two-year mission and i was working in the family business just trying to like figure out what i wanted to do i was good i was going to go to college so i got home in like May, end of May, I worked that summer in my family business, and then at the end of that summer, my brother, who's the CEO of our family business, which is a, a swim school, by the way, we teach little kids how to swim, he was like, we're opening a new facility for the first time ever, we need somebody to run the marketing, and I haven't used Facebook ads in a long time, I don't really know how the back end works, but I'm willing to pay you to figure it out, and so that was an awesome opportunity for me, and I took it. Um, with both, you know, just full full speed ahead is the way that I took that job, and that's what I was doing in college. So I was I was going to class, and then in between classes, I was running ads and trying to figure out what was working, and what wasn't working. And pretty soon, I figured out that I had no clue what I was doing. And um, you know, like a month before, I was like, marketing doesn't even work. I don't even think that marketing is a real thing. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. And uh, people just buy, you know, whatever they want to buy. I can't influence their decisions at all. But then I started getting into, you know, like your ads start turning into different online influencers. And I was watching a ton of YouTube videos and just trying to figure out this whole Facebook ads thing. And 
um, eventually got to the point where I just we needed to hire somebody else to do the ads because I knew that I wasn't going to be able to have success in getting these um, like filling this new facility that we were opening and so I started looking around and I asked a friend I knew he had like some kind of online business turns out he does Amazon FBA which I had no clue what that was back then hmm. and I was like hey you like you do something online right like can you run ads for my family business and he was like no but I know this guy and he connected me with uh, a guy that had an agency 17 year old and uh, according to his Instagram, I'm not sure how true this was, but he was making six figures at the time as a 17 year old. And it was the first time in my life that I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Like, I've, I'm definitely living beno- below my potential. And like, if this guy can do it, like, I'm just as smart as him. I know I can do it as well. Yeah. And so that's kind of where I went into thinking about starting an agency. And I finished my first semester of college. And then after that, decided I'm going to start an agency. And I bought some programs, like $1,500 for the program and this chatbot software. I remember us talking about that on your onboarding call. You were yeah. talking about, I got these other guys, and I'm like, that's great, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's actually some, I mentioned those guys, which I, it, this was a completely different guy, but ended up that the software he was selling is like, it's like ManyChat, if you use ManyChat, but mm-hmm. like, like one percent of what many chat can do and he was selling it for like 10 times the price <laughs> and i was like yeah. i'm gonna do this i have to spend the money and spent like yeah i spent 1500 on that and Crazy. didn't really go anywhere because it didn't have the functionality that i needed for my client for and then i yeah for my current client which was just my family business and then um but i was like i'm going for it i posted on facebook like hey i'm opening this uh, marketing agency I want to pursue my dream of starting a business and I had a couple friends reach out like hey I have this one of them had an online store one of them wanted to start an online store and I was like oh yeah I totally can do that and they're both on Shopify well I, one of them wanted to get on Shopify and one of them was already on Shopify and I was like I'll work for free I just want to figure it out and like I'm happy like I just don't want to cause any problems there yeah. And within a month, I was like, I have no clue what I'm doing with Shopify. <laughs> and, and I had no service. Like, I had no, my service wasn't defined. I was just like, I do anything online for you, which yeah. I think everybody starts out a little bit like that. Yeah, just kind of broad spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. So eventually, uh, I just had to get rid of those clients because I didn't know what to do anymore. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what I need is somebody who's done this who, can you know walk like talk me through those difficult moments where I'm like I have no clue what to do uh, I can send them a message like we can get on the phone something like that and I knew that this guy that had um, run ads for my family business that was 17 like he did a mentorship program like that so I was looking around kind of at that option and then a couple other people in the space and as I was looking around I ran into Trey stuff and he really resonated with me because of the like really God-fearing person and he has a lot less like hype and money focus than everybody else in this space, which I really, again, resonated with. Um, and so I watched, you know, just became super indoctrinated watching all your YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> welcome to the funnel, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I'm at the very, very bottom of the funnel as far as you can get. Yeah, um, yeah. But anyways, I reached out to Trey. I was like, hey, what's coaching like? And he, he sent me his link. I signed up for a time. And um, during this time, I had just kind of come at a, to a crossroads in my life where I was like, I don't, I was kind of doubting everything that I was doing at that point. Like what, how much is because I want to be in college and how much is like the relationships I'm in or the, um, you know, like everything I was doing, I was just like, why am I here and what got me here and should I stay here? Yeah. And I remember looking at Trey's Instagram and there was this post that was like, you know, people told me I was crazy. People like ridiculed me. They told me I'd never do it. And like, I did what I felt called to do Mm. and it's worked out for me. And that was like, honestly, really what gave me the courage to move forward. I'm not sure if you even know that. No, I don't. That's cool. Yeah. That, 
I love that. Like really, really powerful post. And I think it was like a few months earlier that he had posted it. Um, it's on his Instagram. It's the one where he's like up talking and like pointing at a, mm. a <laughs> at like a board, the screen, yeah. like a screen. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so cool. I, I reached out to Trey. We scheduled the time and got on the phone with him and um, just it was a really good chat and I remember him I remember saying like my goal is like five grand a month profit I, I want to just be able to do you know keep going to school and um, make a decent amount of money because right now I'm just like stressed about money and I don't want to keep continuing making like four hundred dollars a month like I was making mm -hmm. and he was like I remember <laughs> I remember you said like, oh, yeah, that shouldn't be too hard. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Just uh, talking from the completely different side of the spectrum. Like, yeah. me and the, like, have no clue about marketing or any of this stuff. Like, more than the average person, but you on the other side of, like, building a successful business. And so, had the confidence to move forward with him. And we had our next call the next week. And I remember... Because I had spent like, I don't know, four or five months in the agency space, but I just had a million questions that the YouTube videos weren't answering. I didn't want to sift through like another hundred YouTube videos trying to find the answer to my questions. And we just sat down, and I remember I had this monster agenda. Yeah. It's like two oh pages. my gosh, it was awesome. <laughs> I, I instantly loved you. I was like, oh, perfect. <laughs> like you just gave me a bunch of questions. Yeah. Didn't make me have to think a lot. I was like, okay, that here's your answer. That here's your answer. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. And we, he forgot to hit record on that video. It'd be really funny to go It would watch be cool it. to have that. This was back before I figured out, like, that I couldn't automatically record. I thought it was recording. Uh -huh. I think I just didn't realize that it wasn't. Yeah, it's a anyway. big shame that we don't have that recording. <laughs> yeah. It was a really good first meeting and just, like, gave me the, the confidence to move, like, again, continue moving forward. But I didn't really know what to do next. And then our next call, um, Usually the way Trey does is like, I'm not sure if it's exactly the same now, but like three to four calls a month. I was just doing three, that was perfect amount for me. And we, the next one I was talking to him about like client acquisition, I just didn't know what to do. I was like reaching out to business owners. I've never really had a problem talking to people, but um, nothing was happening because of it. Mm -hmm. And he was like, if you're nervous about it, just do client research, don't do client outreach like don't try to sell them just do research on their business model and I was like that makes a lot of sense and that was like where everything started yeah. so I started reaching out I just that same weekend I think I had a conversation with a friend who was like his dad's a dentist and he recommended the orthodontist niche because they have high patient volumes and they they make a lot per per patient and they need constant marketing so I was like okay I'll just you know, they say everybody says pick a niche and go for it. So I just decided picked to pick orthodontist. And I say, can I take a note off that real quick? Yeah. I mean, I have so many people who are like, what's the niche? What's your favorite niche? What's the top niches? And like, there's even a lot of people who out there who make content like top three niches. Like, mm -hmm. it's clickbait. There are no <laughs> good niches. There's only niches where you figure out a way of positioning yourself yeah. and an offer that they need, and then you can make money anywhere. Yeah. Because it all comes down to the offer and how you're selling it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and there's no one niche that is like, oh, this is like, it's like people look at my agency, like, oh, you're in the information product niche. Yours is easy. Like, what do you, <laughs> dude, say that to my face. Like, it's really hard. There's some, there, there are some really stressful days in this industry. And so same with orthodontists, like you just yeah. picked it and went. So I just, I wanted to take that note because I really think that's a big false belief for people that you have to overthink the niche. Mm -hmm. You heard orthodontists, you're like, yeah, that's good enough. And yeah. he just, and he went. And here we are, $10,000 a month profit a yeah. couple months later. So really, really internalize that. That's a big note, but I didn't want to interrupt you too hard there. So I'd love no. for you to continue. Yeah, just along that same line, like just take action. Because if you're taking action, you're 10 times ahead of everybody else. Like if you're just watching YouTube videos, that doesn't count as action. If you're like talking to people online about like what they might do, that doesn't count as taking action. Like messaging business owners and figuring out what does and doesn't work. Researching that like researching their business model that does count as work yeah so that's what I did I just said like hey I want to I, I messaged like the business page of the first orthodontist that pulled up when I Facebook like I just Facebooked orthodontist near me and the first one that pulled up I was like hey 
I'm a digital marketer. I run Facebook ads. I want to, um, I'm researching your industry and I want to just get a call. Like I can, I'm happy to give you like a ton of marketing advice. I just need you to answer a few questions that I have about your business model. And I got a message back like 10 minutes later that was like, yeah, let's do it. And I sent her a Calendly link and we, we talked with the marketing coor coordinator there like the next week. Yeah. And I remember texting Trey that morning. I was like, I have a call today. What do I do? <laughs> 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 and he was like, uh, he talked about how you kind of this trust hump idea. Like you just need to give them so much value that they just feel obligated towards you. And also yeah. like you're either going to live with a friend or a client at the end of it. So once you've given them all the value, like you've asked the questions, you've given them all the marketing tips that you would, that you want to give them. Then the next thing to do is just say like, Hey, you have two options. You can either spend uh, like a year of your time and your own money and trying to figure this out and still not really understand it. Or you can just hire me to do it. Yeah. And by the time I had spent 20 minutes saying, you know, it's like basic marketing stuff, like put a Facebook pixel on your website, like run these ads, do email marketing. Um, by the time I had shared that, she was just like, like, who are you? Yeah, Why? her mind was blown. <laughs> yeah, Facebook pixel was a whole new world to her. Yeah, yeah. and since she's become a really close friend, like a client that I love, and I've, since they were local, I would like go in and film videos, and I've just like, I feel like they're my family now. It's a really awesome client. Yeah. So cool. Um, but yeah, so then she was like, okay, I'll think about it. And I was like, okay, that's totally fine. And again, didn't really have a service offering defined. And I had mentioned a few different things in there, like uh, like email marketing, Facebook pixel, like having a send message button on your Facebook page. So people, it's a lower barrier to entry. And I didn't really like mention what I uh, sell. Really? And she <laughs> yeah. was like- She's like, okay, so what do you do for us then? Yeah. yeah. Well, that was like after the fact. So we. Anyways, like it, I was like, oh, usually this would be two grand, but I'm selling it. I'd be happy to get you in as my first orthodontist for a thousand dollars. And like my experience is I've, I've run uh, lessons or run ads for this swim lesson company here in the same county as you guys, like yeah. I know how it works. And she was like, okay, I'll think about it. I'm gonna talk to my office manager right now. She just like got really excited about it. And I think a week later, she emailed me like, okay, we don't want to do email marketing. Like how much would that be? And I was like, $800 just cause that, yeah, uh, yeah you know, it sounds like it should no, be No, 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 it was 600. That's what it was. Yeah. And then, cause they wanted to do a click to call ad and I was like, I don't recommend it, but like I'll do it. Yeah. And they paid me 600 and, and I was like running these click to call ads for a couple of weeks. Nothing was happening. And what did it feel like though to get your first invoice paid from a client? Oh my man? gosh. That was, I still remember I was like, it's like euphoric. Yeah. I was paid and I was like, I was on a run and I came yeah. home and looked at it and then I was in the shower just like, yes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> such dude. a big deal. Dude. It's life changing. Mm -hmm. Completely life changing. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was amazing. And I remember texting Trey. He's like, dude, my first online payment was 30 bucks. 600 is huge. And yeah. I was like, you're right. I have a frame. My first payment is 30 bucks online. Is yeah, that was a, that's right. That's what I told you. I'm like, my yeah. first was 30 bucks, man. You're way ahead of me. Like, yeah. yeah, that's super cool. So then a couple weeks later, I was able to upsell them to 800 uh, because I was going to run the chatbot ads for them, which I'm I love messenger marketing chatbots. That was like where I really thrived online with the with Facebook ads. So that's what I wanted to do. And within that first month, I was able to get them a new patient. One new patient for an orthodontist is like 4000 to $6,000 of revenue. And they probably keep about half of that, depending on what their overhead is in the practice. So uh, they were like, yeah, let's keep going. And, and so we, and I, the ad spend was probably way too high. It's probably like 500. And I, I don't know, I was, I was still figuring some stuff out, but it wasn't, yeah, I can't remember what the ad spend was, if you're wondering that. I know yeah. some people would probably wonder that. Some people probably will, but <laughs> I'm a, a minority for sure. Anyways. Yeah. Um, so that was the like the very beginning of the journey, and then I was like messaging more orthodontists. It was literally the very first orthodontist that I messaged, and that research method, I got like five or six more calls, but all of them, like none of them were really, at the end of the call, I, I didn't feel comfortable being like, 
so do you want me to run ads for you? Because they were literally just doing it as a favor to me. But it, it was still good to get on the phone with them, understand their business model, and get it. All right, sorry about that uh, cut there. Um, camera battery died. So Keaton, he believes we we're at the end of your first month, or yeah. we're going to wrap up where he was. And I think I've asked him to then kind of forward into um, where I'd like to see it go. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to do our best to continue from where we were. This, it, literally, it's been like 20 minutes since the cut. We were just having a really good conversation off camera. <laughs> There's so much to talk about. Honestly, we could hang out for like a week straight and not shut up. So, yeah. um, but anyway, where cool. were you? We could finish up from where we were. Yeah. So anyways, I had signed that first client. Then I also had my family business as a client. And at that point, I was making like, I think the orthodontist was 800 a month. And my family business was paying me 600 a month. And I thought that was like you know, like 1400 a month or whatever, 13. Yeah, that's 1400 yeah, a month. 14. Like the most money anybody could ever want. Like I was <laughs> amazed with myself. Yeah. And, and then I was like, you know, I'll just keep like doing the same outreach method, trying to get on, like get some more orthodontists. But I, it was like a two month dry spell where I didn't close any orthodontists. And I was like, you know, maybe it's just not the niche for me. And I started like experimenting in other places. And ended up closing an insurance agent. It was like a personal connection that I had, but I didn't like have any idea what to do there. Like I hadn't researched. That was the other thing I was doing during that time is just researching every single day about orthodontic marketing, what to do, why. And um, closed the insurance agent, but I ended up just giving him a full refund because I couldn't, I just didn't have time to devote to his campaigns because then I got another client, orthodontist client. And the way I got that client was through Facebook groups and um, just posting valuable content there and getting people to engage in conversations. Yeah, just one of the key methods that I've been teaching. Yeah. Get clients coming to you, you know, because I mean, I'm sure you saw the big difference between you going to clients and clients coming to you. Yeah. Totally, completely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But. Yeah. So then. I was, I felt honestly like really maxed out at three clients because I was like servicing everybody, um, like client communication. If the campaigns were going well, I was the one fixing them. And I was having to do research and I was trying to do, get more clients. And I just felt maxed out at that point. And um, I feel like generally I have like a less, you know, I'm not the type of person that can just like work all day, every day, like people in college that I would, I was friends with, like they have a full college schedule and they're working like 20, 30, 40 hours a week. Like that's totally not me. I'm like a more slow, methodical person. So at that point I was like, Trey was like, dude, you got to hire a contractor. And I was like, Oh, I just don't know if I can do that. It was like, I don't know why, but this big mental hurdle. Yeah. And it always is for people. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> I think it's because we think that we're there. Like people are buying us, like they're buying, me but they're not they're just buying the result yeah and so huge key there yeah like huge key yeah they're not buying you your time yeah. your expertise get out of your own head there's no ego involved uh -huh. they're buying the result like even your coaching our, our coaching relationship yeah it's not me it's what i know and what i've done you know and what could be done with me yeah and keep keeping that internalized is huge yeah, yeah and that helps you hire contractors very quickly yeah yeah. So I got, I got a, I just posted something on Upwork, interviews of a few people, and ended up just going with the one that was like, honestly, I got along the best with. He had some good proofs, and he seemed like a really nice guy. And, you know, the other guy was like, the other guy that I was close to hiring, just, um, I also gave him a test project. Test project didn't go as well with the other guy, so I ended up hiring my, uh, one of my contractors now. And something that really, really helped, like my business would not be in business today that I should mention is that during my research process, I ran into somebody who has, who had run an, uh, an agency for orthodontists, 83 different orthodontists all over the country. He's an orthodontist himself, runs a really successful practice. And I just emailed him and was like, Hey, how much for an hour of your time? Mm, that's huge. Yeah. Huge. And Super huge. So in the first, you know, we had, it was a $200 call, totally worth it. He let me in. He's like, this is what I learned from running an agency. This is what I would do. This is what I wouldn't do. This is what I, you should offer. This is how you should price it. Mm. And that was 
like a huge game changer. And, and what he taught me was how to run an evergreen campaign instead of an amount off. And that mm -hmm. resonates with my market so much because they're like, I don't want to offer $500 off, $750 off Invisalign every time we run an ad. I just want new patients to come in. Yeah. And he taught me how to do that, which was invaluable. Yeah, that's huge. And that, that's a big thing too. Like, you know, I, one of the phrases I've started using probably since our coaching contract ended in my coaching, I don't know if you've heard it, me said it before, but uh, confidence is currency. The more confidence you have in your ability to get results for your clients, like it's like this, it's like the process. Have you heard sell yourself first? Uh -uh. You haven't heard that? No. If, before you sell anything to anybody, sell yourself. You uh -huh. gotta believe in the process. Definitely. So you investing just a little bit of money with somebody who's done it for 83 people, yeah. that's huge, you know? And that's, that's why I massively encourage, do your research on your market, like understand it, but still hire contractors to do the technical. Yeah. You know, that's huge. And that's Super where cool. you could, I mean, if somebody, I feel like the orthodontist niche isn't as much like chiropractors or something else like super saturated where you're going to find 12 million contractors that have the expertise to run the campaigns for you. Yeah. <laughs> so I, and plus, even if they, I mean, you could find a contractor that ha is really good at running the ads for that industry and they have the process and that could be your research. Or you could do it yourself, which is what I've done, and like really develop something that is super blue ocean and not like nobody else is doing it in my market, and that allows me to differentiate my services quite a bit. Mm. Um, so I hired the contractor, and then I like took like three weeks off. Honestly, like I was working a little bit trying to get new clients, but he was servicing everybody. That's when you went on vacation, right? You went on like a, yeah. another mission or something like that retreat. Yeah, I was just a. It's like a vacation we go on with my family every year cool where we have and you were still i remember posting to the facebook group he's like i just took a vacation for like a week yeah. worked like an hour a day still making money and like that was i was like really <laughs> cool like good for him that's that's fantastic i love that yeah it yeah. really felt surreal to like just have the money coming in like not be servicing the clients and not like so worried about doing everything from a to z and so then I ended up closing another client the next month. And then since then, um, just have gotten a really steady stream of like keeping a pretty full pipeline of bringing people in. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's how I got to 10K. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> to make a long story short, that's how I got to 10K. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it really just comes down to systemizing your client results process mm -hmm. and your client attraction process. Yeah. That's really it. Like, and that's, that's what I teach. It's just, look, man, all you're building is two machines. You're building client attraction and client results. I don't know if you've seen my new case study. I've got like new training out there. Yeah, yeah. Client attraction, client results. You know, I keep saying, I don't know if you've seen this because our coaching contract ended a couple months ago. We have a lot of contact back and forth, but like at this point, he just needs to continue to scale. You know, so I mean, yeah. speaking of which, like, you know, what's the long term for you, man? Like, you're ten thousand dollars now, but mm -hmm. we we're having a conversation off camera. Like, your goals are a lot bigger, mm -hmm. you know. So tell us about that, and I think really internalize this too, because if your goal is ten grand a month, you're gonna get there, and then, and what, yeah. you know? Like, so tell us kind of what, what's what's next? What's the long term for you? You know, whether it includes me or whatever. Like, literally, just share next year and a half two years yeah you know so i've i've recently like with help from i remember on one of our first coaching calls trey talked about scalability going from a service to a product the only way to to uh, be really scalable is to productize your services and i was like is that a real word yeah i don't and, think it's a real word but <laughs> no, I, I, I think it, it is I is really it a real do. word yeah. productize yeah. yeah but i had never heard it and like never understood that concept so that was huge for me and i've since uh, started developing an info product so yeah. it's basically just the back end of my agency and I sell access to it if somebody right. doesn't want to and so this is for orthodontists mm -hmm. so basically like like one of the process that I take people through so if you're a new viewer to this channel like we don't just stop at nine ten clients like mm -hmm. once you've got that and you're getting them consistent results especially in Keaton's case pretty consistent results when his clients put in the work and do what they have to do mm -hmm. they get really consistent results with Keaton and so it's like all right let's get you totally out of the process and build a program that they can do on their own the final price tag on this thing will be fairly significant once it's totally done mm -hmm. and you just sell that you know and then you are a fully functioning agency with a done-for-you element 
but you're also indoctrinating masses by by selling a course and making money selling the course yeah you know so I mean where do you see that scaling to what what's the goal for you all time with that yeah so I was actually reading a book today called Atomic Habit uh-huh. um, highly recommend it good book and it was talking about like why we shouldn't set goals but we should focus on systems mm. that are gonna bring us to our goals like you know our goals because just yeah. for that reason like every time I've set a monetary goal I get there and then I just plateau yeah and so the system and this is something that Trace taught me as well is just like personal development and like working harder on the things that matter the most and like reaping the benefits when they come so for me the plan is just to continue putting out a lot of content that's what's really helped me to get clients is mm-hmm getting content in front of the right people like if I could put it like how to get cl- how to get clients is put client or put, put content, content in front of the right people just figure right out people. how to do that however it works yeah whether it's Facebook your groups next. YouTube LinkedIn whatever yeah. and that helps them get over that trust hump that we talked about earlier too exactly. before they even contact you they trust you mm-hmm. yeah and the sale becomes a lot more easy yeah that way yeah anyway so I want I just have a plan to finish the course and put out tons of content. I'm confident I can grow the agency to um, 40, 50, 60 grand a month. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, it's super easy. Once I can, you know, yeah. the course is just sucking so much time right now. That, yeah. Um, <laughs> That's the big hurdle. Yeah. Like literally picking over from the airport, he's like, bro, this course. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's a lot of work, you know, but yeah, man, like once it's done, I see it going even bigger, man. Like the orthodontist niche, like, you know, because I did my own research, it needs it needs what you're doing, mm-hmm. you know? So, like, you get the right ad structure, like, you know, we've got information product clients right now, like, one's, actually, I'll say names currently, because we've got a lot of NDA, but we've got about $100,000 a month with this program, and they're nowhere near as much of an authority in their niche as Keaton is in the orthodontist niche, and so, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's no reason it can't scale yeah. pretty highly, you know? It's and it's a matter of removing yourself from the process you know like just that first hurdle of hiring a contractor and removing yourself was such a big mindset thing yeah the further you can remove yourself honestly the better the closer you can put the result within reach of a client the better Mm -hmm. and by making a program that's about as close as you can get without actually physically running their operation yeah you know um and becoming i don't know i see the the problems that i'm facing right now i think is becoming a real business because everybody pretty much everyone that starts out in the smma space is like oh yeah i'm gonna, like it's so two cool. three grand like, a month whatever yeah. i'm like a gangster yeah, yeah and that that's what they want and then they get to that point and they're like oh like should i continue or should i not and maybe some people are happy there which is fine but this is my full-time gig i want to grow it really big and i'm viewing it as like a like trey says like a mirror of myself like if the business is good, it's going to be because my personal habits are good. 100%. And vice versa. So uh, I'm seeing it as a way to, to, you know, my education now that I've dropped out of college and also a way to grow my personal capital and uh, eventually just want to be, like, down the line, a, a really big inspiration to people who started out just like me because yeah. at the end of the day, like, the only thing holding them back is themselves, their own self-sabotage and mindset issues. And that's something I'm really confident and, and passionate about is just helping like helping people get over their own issues so that they can have success build in whatever what they, they want to build. Do. Yeah. yeah, for sure. It's freaking cool, man. Thanks. I don't know. what I can't think of much else that needs shared. I really just wanted to make it about Keaton's story and where he's started and where he's gone. Um, you know my belief system you know I don't feel like this is me I feel like this is I'm being worked through this is the result it's really cool honestly like meeting a student in person it's kind of surreal you mm-hmm. know um, it's very much helping me realize how real this is if that makes sense I hope that doesn't sound horrible to all the other like people I've worked with <laughs> but, like it's real it's real people and it's real impact and so it was um, it's been amazing. We're going to spend the rest of the day together, too. I mean, we've got some stuff planned. We're thinking we're going to go get some steak. Mm-hmm. I've got a spot downtown. I mean, it's Tuesday. There's no way we need to get a reservation. So it's this really nice spot. Um, and probably show you the family, too. He's going to stop by my place, meet my mom. <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, I mean, what, sum, sum up sort of, sort of some, some things that I think maybe 
we went too fast on this video over maybe just so I'm gonna give you kind of the summary let you end off the video how you want to end it yeah. you know we had a few qu we were looking at the questions that people had posted earlier right? yeah we were we were do you want to grab those yeah sure be real careful with the mic too like if you rub it it'll okay. make a sound so apologies if that's the case that's why I've been holding it like really like a, like a feather got it yeah so we do have some questions um, so I think the first thing is the first question that stood out to me mm -hmm. was um, let me see if I can find it. There was one that I really liked. I think it was the second one. Was it the second one? <laughs> no, that's the second one. Somebody made a little joke. He said, if he had zero dollars, how did he pay you? Because I put a post. I'm like, zero dollars to ten thousand dollars a month. Some, some joke. Um, okay, no, here's a good one. So, you know, basically he said, so obviously at ten thousand dollars a month in revenue, you must have a team. I'll take this back from you. Yeah. You must have a team. Um... What does it look like basically to manage a team? Because I think you have you have two, yeah, have two people. Well, so like you know, I mean, I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about team management, but it's probably a bit different to hear like a student talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, like, what does the day to day look like managing a team? Um, I know you say your clients report to your contractors, your contractors report to you, which is the model. That's how yeah. you want to do it. But sort of tell tell me, tell them about that and how that structure looks like for you. And then yeah. I think it's a good way to end the video. It's a good technical value add, cool. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Trey and I were talking about this earlier where he runs a very high ticket, low amount of clients agency and I run a lower ticket, high amount of clients agency that, you know, down the line we could have eighty orthodontists paying about fifteen to two grand a month. That'd be a really big business, but it's a lot of clients as well. Yeah. And so Trey can work closer with all of his clients, be on the phone with them, like be in the Slack channels with the contractors. But what I found myself doing when I had, you know, once I got to eight, nine clients is replying to emails all day, um, scheduling calls with people, just like worrying about support tickets, like all this stuff that wasn't really moving the needle forward, but was necessary to run the business. And so what I do day to day with my team is they run all of the ads. I, I still manage like research. I'm always just like trying to figure out better ways to optimize our campaigns and then I, I bounce it off the contractors they implement that and then they're also communicating with the client if something goes wrong technically the client will email or text them and then they have a monthly meeting with them uh, whenever their billing cycle starts and so what I do is basically just answer slack messages send slack messages and like you said, I have two, so I have two contractors, just hired a second one. And also- And what do they do, by the way? They run the Facebook ads, like create the landing pages, customize the copy for the landing pages, tweak the campaigns, gotcha. communicate with the clients. And so you have two, maybe the one's an ad buyer, the other's like a landing page guy? No, so they're, I call them account managers and they're okay. just, they manage everything. So they clients. both do the same thing, but you need two of them at this point. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, just because that's, like diversification for me if one of them just quits on me then I have the other one or if one needs to go on vacation the other one can handle the stuff like I, I could just keep the one for now but I, I wanted to diversify more because of that reason gotcha. and uh, another thing that's really helped us is creating like a oh dude the battery's beeping again okay okay um, I don't know how much time that gives us <laughs> okay um, anyway, if you have any more questions for Keaton, leave them in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> we got to wrap up the video. Okay. I don't want to have to plug it in again. It's so. been awesome. You guys hey. can do it. Mindset issues are the only issues. Those are your only hurdles. Yeah. Uh, anybody can do it. You can do it. Fantastic. Thanks for being here, Keaton. Really, yeah. honestly, an honor and a pleasure. Happy to call you a student and a friend. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.